We are live from the Giant Bomb Podcast Studio. It's the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy Podcast with your host, Mr. Brian Tong. Dude, is your brain working? My it's brain's okay. not working, man. Beecham, I still love you, though, because <laughs> your brain is actually working. Welcome to the show, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, just a little early jump on the week. Here in the U.S., it is Thanksgiving coming up. We only work for three days. Hey! I'm actually only working for today because guess where I'm heading off to? So Could jolly. you guess? Could you guess? Hawaii. Hawaii. Man, so, oh, I wish I was. I'm gonna come back tan. Enough. I'm gonna come back ten pounds heavier. <laughs> I can't wait. But you know what? Before we talk all that talk, welcome to the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy. It is our complimentary audio podcast, an extension of the show. Really dig deep, dive deep in with us when you uh, join us. Also, you make the show possible. So we have our calls that you guys can be a part of this show. One eight hundred six one six two six three eight. Leave your name, where you're from, and your comments. We've got some great calls today, even on this short week. So yeah. we've got nothing but love, and we will continue to keep on showing love to you, right? Totally. Thank well, you for calling. Thank you for calling. You guys help make the show, so that's great. Quite honestly, if we don't have you, it's like yeah, that it's means like, no what are we, one's what are we listening. Talk about? Who's, yeah, what are we going <laughs> to talk about? Well, let's just jump into the show again, that number, before I go one more time. I'll say it slowly. 1-800-616-2638. Someone on Periscope's like, hey, 1-800-DEAD-LIVE. It's like calls, but they're not live but they're dead live. Sure. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Uh, we've alluded to this and started talking about this, but the story has really picked up steam, and I am talking about the antenna issues with the iPhone 7. Now, last week on this show, we talked about the potential chance. There were reports. People are asking the question, is Apple potentially throttling the maximum speed of the iPhone 7 with the Qualcomm modems on Verizon and Sprint. So I'm going to give a little history backdrop for people that don't know about this and they're just jumping in. And I don't want you to freak out about, ah, I have the worst phone. No, just let's let's just <laughs> be cool about this, okay? So first off, there are two antennas, in, two different antennas inside the iPhone 7. The AT&T and T-Mobile phones have a Intel-based LTE modem. The Verizon and Sprint phones have a Qualcomm-based LTE modem. And then also from what I've read, if you purchase the unlocked version of the phone, you will also be blessed with the Qualcomm LTE modem. Now, early on, uh, as far as a couple weeks ago, an independent test found that when you're in low signal locations, and I found this to be true even before this report came out, let's say you have one dot of data. Yeah. The Qualcomm-based modems perform better, 75% better in relationship to data speed compared to the AT&T modem phone. So I believe right it. there, I and I've felt it. I commute every day. All of a sudden, yes. when I use the iPhone 7, I'm like, I'm not getting as good of a data signal in yeah. general. I, I knew it right when it happened. So that is still holding true, okay? So you might be frustrated about that, and you should be, because I am. The next wrinkle to this story is that there was a rumor that, okay, the Qualcomm modem on Verizon and Sprint, theoretically has a maximum download data speed of 650, 50, sorry, 600 megabits per second. Compare that to the Intel LTE modem that has a theoretical maximum download speed of 450 megabits per second. But tests have found that both of the phones are basically performing around the same in that 450 megabit speed when it comes to maximum download speed. And again, depending on where you are, how many people are on the network, uh, you know, your data is going to change, your data speed and performance and just cell phone performance in general will be different. But the fact is that Apple was rumored to potentially be throttling this. And now Bloomberg has stepped forward as well as Rico to confirm that that is indeed the case. Hmm. How does that make you feel, Beecham? It makes me bummed out. I because? Mean, I, would like, I would like full speed. If I, if I have a modem that has this speed capable, I would like to have <laughs> it, you know, give me full power, Scotty. Give, 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 me, give, give it to me, Scotty. Yes. Now, here's the other thing, though, where I agree with you, but at the same time, it is in Apple's best interest to have all of their phones perform around essentially at the same level. For example, we know we've seen in computers where sometimes processors are overclocked for better performance mm -hmm. and sometimes they're not. We've actually even seen this in cell phones where you could overclock a processor of a phone faster per to perform better theoretically. 
but then you're also risking okay will it get over will it get too hot that's will a, it that overheat that's my first question right yeah. i'm going to have a hot phone in my pocket yeah. hot phone <laughs> now this is deliberately related to the intel modem which is not the actual process of the phone here is we've read this before um but let me see if i can find this quote um specifically Apple had made a comment. Here we go. Apple's official statement on the case. Mm, um, and we did talk about this last oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. week, but I'll say it again. In all of our rigorous lab tests based on wireless industry standards, in thousands of hours of real-world field testing, and in extensive carrier partner testing, the data shows there is no discernible difference in the wireless performance of any of the models. This is according to Apple. Yeah, so they're, they're making them all run the same speed, basically. Yeah, they're tr they're making they're treating all phones equal, which again, that makes I sense. say they should. Yeah, it makes sense. They should do that, quite honestly. Just because a component can go faster, if you can't the whole question that I think is kind of interesting is, okay, well, what if they were able to get enough Qualcomm LTE modems as a whole and equipped all of their phones with these modems? Then that's when you're telling me uh you're really not maximizing the speed because, you know, you put the same Hardware in every product, ideally, again, networks are all different. And mm -hmm. some, there's even, you know, some, at, also, you can't imagine all carriers are not going to also let you get the maximum throughput of the hardware that you have. You, you know, there's always limiters. They're throttling there. me. They're already throttling <laughs> you, right? I get to 16 gigabytes and they're like, hey, you get to 22, we're going to throttle you. They're going to throttle. Yes. They want to slow everybody down. So, so we use too much data. We're data junkies. Dude, so sometimes like the Wi-Fi here is really bad in yes. our building. So yes. I just switch to LTE, right? Yeah, yeah. And and it happens faster sometimes. I know. When you no, do that, it, it's like, it does what? most of the time, bro. <laughs> like yeah. um so anyways, what I wanted to bring this issue up about the two different antennas is that it does exist. This is not an antenna gate where when you squeeze your phone, your phone actually loses a signal. Oh yeah, yeah. It's that was just, an actual physical issue with the phone when that happened on the iPhone it was, 4. It was yeah. a physical issue. Yeah, right? you put your hand over certain yeah. parts of it and it would lose signal. <clears throat> if you squeeze it hard enough, it act, the thing is you'd have to squeeze it hard. But in other cases, um, you know, it was just it was an actual issue. Apple solved it by saying, hey, guys, here's a free case <laughs> so that you wouldn't basically interfere with it as much. Yeah, it's a trip. Okay, so this is all I'm telling you about this antenna issue is because A, I want to educate you. B, it's good to know. But there's really nothing we can do about it. So is this something that Apple can change? Like, you know, maybe a year down the road, it's an update. Technically, quite honestly, if Apple, they didn't specifically say Apple, how Apple might be limited, but it's most likely some sort of a firmware update Yeah, that's what that they, or a firmware that they have placed on that specific phone so that it doesn't reach its theoretical maximum capacity. Yeah. But at the same time, if all their phones can't reach this same similar benchmark, they're not going to only say, hey, if you have a Verizon phone, you're going to get faster data. I right. Got I got you. A lot of times when you get faster data, it's kind of more on the carrier than it is on the actual phone because that would... I mean, hey, they're fragmenting their phones enough. We have yeah. different screens, different screen sizes, different tech, even moving forward in the future with the whole LO, potentially only one iPhone having an OLED screen at the biggest size with a dual lens camera. I mean, we have, we've they've already fragmented their product line a bunch, so who knows? But I just want to let people know and don't feel lame. I at first was going to make a brew ha a big brew haha and try to get my AT and T phone switched out because it does bother me. Um, but they're it's not like they're just hey we're just going to swap out your phone for you now. It's yeah, not yeah. that easy. No. So if you're someone who hasn't purchased a phone yet, though, I would say go through Apple or the carrier to make sure you get an unlocked version of the phone. Totally, because I, I think it's, it's the one phone. actually. Sorry, I think it's the. I could be wrong. Correct me, but I believe it's the phone that is unlocked directly through Apple. Is also has a Qualcomm modem. Cool, that's good to know. I'm just because, just I user mean, tips, yo. Yeah, someone sent me kisses. Just the thanks for the tip. <laughs> Unfortunately, the unlocked phones are a little more expensive, right? Correct. But it's you could probably well you could probably get one used. That's what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way to go. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's move on to the next Apple story. What's happening? What's shaking? And what is bacon? Apple, believe? Do you believe this? I do now. Apple, according to a Bloomberg report, is abandoning the development of any wireless routers moving forward. The company recently um, stopped producing their own monitors. We know about this, right? They used to have the great Apple display, and that used to be. 
the cinema display. They had like a 22 inch that I bought. They had a 23 inch that I bought after that that was higher res yeah. because at the time they were some of the best displays on the market. You were paying the price of a computer for them. Don't get me wrong. Totally. But things have changed. Now we know with their LG display, it's a partnership. But let's be honest, it's really an LG display. According to this Bloomberg report, Apple has disbanded its division that develops wireless routers in another move to try to sharpen their focus on consumer products that generate a bulk of its revenue, according to people familiar with the matter. That's straight from Bloomberg. This is surprising to me because the Internet of Things is a huge thing. Uh, you know, the home kit, all that stuff. That seems like this would tie into that. I you would. Know, this would be an important piece of that puzzle. I agree with you, and I think here's here's the way that I I can see it. First of all, let's be honest. Apple's wireless routers might look pretty if you're into Apple's aesthetic and design, but there are plenty of better routers on the market from D Link, from I, Netgear, from Belk. I've I mean, never seen an Apple router in the wild. That you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, you could come to my house and you'll see. I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there's some at Brian Tong's oh house. Oh my gosh! I've never me, seen I anyone. So I've never had a friend. Who's had one? I've, I've never. Really wait, wait! Seen you've never it. had a friend. I've had oh, many you... a friend, but I've never had a friend oh. who had a Apple wireless <laughs> router. <laughs> I'm messing so with you, Jim. You're you know, my friend. It's like I, I kind of understand. Like they don't seem like they really were popular. It's not. You have to be a diehard Apple fan to basically yeah. have an Apple wireless <laughs> router. I'm. That's oh. yeah. You know who that is. All right, should we pour some out for the Apple routers? No, I'm all, I'll, we'll pour a little out, but we, you know what? We need to get a pour some out, but I'll only pour it out when it's officially announced. Okay, gotcha. Because, you know, like... This is a report. This is a report. Um, gotcha. This is a good report. I believe it's true. Uh, but here's some other reference to the Apple wireless routers. They haven't refreshed them since 2013. I've received plenty wow. of emails saying, hey, should I get an Apple wireless router? And my response was like, Quite honestly, if you get one now, it's not like they're going to be updating the technology anytime soon. I think uh, one of the new standards, 802.11af, which is supposed to be pretty massive. I mean, that's not really expected until another year and a half. Or, or is it AG? Sorry. G A G. I don't know. I don't know. But I think the number I think you said was right. I don't know the last yeah. two letters. A G is kind of the upcoming consumer standard. There's also professional uh, kind of commercial uses for uh, wireless connectivity, but it's still not coming out for another year and a half. So I told the person, like, you know what? It'll be fine. But now I'm like, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. If you, <laughs> no. I, I also say there are plenty of other actually better alternatives. Oh, totally. Uh, there's this really cool company called Orbi that does this like awesome networking platform where you um, can basically get these nodes and put them in around your house. Google's wi latest Wi-Fi routers are very similar to that. Hmm. But uh, Orbi is, I actually like Orbi a lot. Look it up, y'all. Uh, but again, uh, looks like and it's i don't think they're selling these in droves but they were at a, a long time ago apple's getting out of the wireless network router business i do want to say for the record if i recall right someone can correct me i believe the ibook the clamshell ibook was one of the first laptops with wire with a with a wi-fi card in it oh really i re if i yeah, recall I right that. yeah yeah apple way back in the day actually helped pioneer and push wi-fi forward at least from a consumer standpoint. because And I remember the reason why I was so high on getting these wireless, net, uh, the airport base station that looked like a silver UFO, the very That's first right, the one, airport. the very first ones <laughs> that looked like UFOs, it was because they were pushing this forward. But now, like all industries and companies mature, they're, they're not on the front end of this anymore. They really aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it makes sense that they would bow out. Uh, there again, there's no official statement, but I remember these I have, I actually still own a white, it's like the second or third gen, a white UFO airport base station that I just held on to because I just thought it was dope. Put it in the museum. Put it in the Brian Tong Museum of Apple products. I will. I will. <laughs> we'll put that in our book that we're going to make, our <laughs> Apple book. <laughs> Take some pictures of it. Let's just hand glue it. <laughs> yeah. Let's just hand glue that thing. <laughs> we'll bind it ourselves. <laughs> All right. So um, so that's the latest going on with Apple and wireless. So yeah, we'll we'll pour some out when it's official. Uh, we just wanted to also follow up. This is a real quick mention. We have talked about the breakdown in the past episodes of why Apple limited their MacBook Pros to 16 gigs of RAM. A lot of people are like, look, there's other laptops and computers that can clearly go up to a higher capacity, 32 gigs specifically. Um, Phil Schiller directly now addressed this specific issue. Um, he said this was first broken down in a article by Ben Slaney of Mac Daddy. So he, he talked about how the current 
chipset, Intel chipset, and we have talked about this a few more than a few weeks ago. The current chipset doesn't support the faster RAM that is available for 32 gigs of DDR RAM. There is a lower power speed of DDR RAM that could have helped push it, but Apple's chipset, specifically the Intel processor, doesn't support it at the moment. And if they were to push forward with the RAM that it does support, it would require using up more power. And we had talked about how the laptop oh, yeah, yeah. could potentially only get four to five hours of battery life instead of 10. Yeah. And if you're going to really choose that trade-off, you're going to say, I would like a 10-hour battery laptop. Battery life over like milliseconds of time saved. Exactly. Yeah. So people were frustrated about it. I think people have gotten over it. But I also think as people are using the MacBook Pro more, I, I've read some interesting emails of just people that just haven't been as satisfied with it at all. Really? From, just from overall, they're like, this is not a pro machine. But well, again, yeah. there's a lot of pros that use it like a consumer machine that call themselves pros. True. I, we, I mean, we see them every day in our office. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sometimes I use my laptop to do some pro work at work. And it's, <laughs> it is harder. You know, it takes a little longer. You're such, you're, such a, works. you're such a pro. I'm a pro, man. So Phil Schiller just basically addressed the same issue and confirmed what we believe that it was all about battery life and uh, optimizing it for that. And again, you can listen to past episodes where we really, really just get into it. Apple also addressing another issue with iPhone repairs. We talked about last week of the touch disease issue affecting iPhone 6 Plus models and that they have a $149 repair program. Apple has launched another repair program. This one is specific to models of the iPhone 6S with a specific serial number. Uh, They would have had to been manufactured between September and October of 2015 because some of these because these phones within that range had unexpected shutdown issues. Hmm. So the phone would just shut down. I haven't had that problem yet. I haven't, so I feel like I'm okay. Yeah, I think but we're what okay. But you, what you can do is you can call Apple um, and find out. You can basically go to Apple support, or if you look really close, you find out the serial number and then match. talk to them and see if you fall within that range. It will be a free battery replacement um, that seems to be part of this issue that will hopefully cure the those wounds of unexpected shutdowns and again this is specific to the iphone success cool Just yeah i remember hearing reports of people saying when their battery gets to like 45 or something 40 there was a percentage and then it would just shut it off just shut right? off that that's what we're talking just shut about. off okay, i remember now also uh since it's thanksgiving in the u.s for all you apple watch lovers apple watch has a special thanksgiving activity achievement if you run or walk 5k a distance of 5K on November the 24th, you could earn a unique award and an iMessage sticker that looks like a circle turkey with a Looks like the 5K. NBC logo <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Just colored up a little bit. So, so I'm wait, saying, you, get, you get that if you walk? It's like an exclusive dirt. Yeah, because you know how like on, on Thanksgiving Day, come on, you're, you're not walking around. You're just sitting on I'm your sitting. ass. I'm sitting. I'm falling watch. asleep because I'm eating turkey and there's that... Um, what is it? Tryptophan? Tryptophan, baby. Dude, I'm tripping Knock on tryptophan. Out. I'm going to be watching the parade. Oh, my god. The gosh. Macy's Day Parade. In your jammies? In my jams with Dude. some, send some me a sort pic- of alcoholic Send drink. me a picture of that. I'd like to see that. <laughs> I will tweet you a picture, Brian <laughs> Don't You can send it private if you want. You need some jammies for that. So if you're loving your Apple Watch and you want to go work out and get a cool exclusive to that day, uh, like... It's an iMessage sticker, actually. So I guess the hope oh. is that you can brag. You know what's really annoying? <laughs> Your friend's like, Happy Thanksgiving, and you just send the iMessage sticker. I just completed 5K on Thanksgiving. I don't give a flipping, you know? Yeah, I'm going to be like, cool. Glug, 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 glug. Uh, oh, football game. Uh, <laughs> cool. You're cool. No, you're not. Sweet. Totally lame. All right, let's keep on rolling through this. Uh, you had, uh, I guess... Let's let's skip on to your stories because I, I like okay. your contributions to the yeah, show. Yeah, so I got a tweet. I got a tweet from you got a tweet from a guy, and I I'm so sorry. I don't I'm not I don't have his name right now. Hang on, let me see if I can find him. <laughs> yeah. um, but he sent me this thing, and this guy built an Apple mirror, and the tweet came from me from Jake something eighty eight. Okay. Anyway, so there's this Apple mirror that this guy created, and it, it's basically a giant mirror, right? But he modded it so that it works like an iPhone. 
Is it actually connected to an iPhone? I believe it is connected. I think there's an iPhone inside the mirror and it projects all this stuff on the mirror. So anyway, I'll Dang. play the video here. Okay, well, people remember, some people can't see this, so just it's, explain it. It's pretty cool. Like, you know, it has, it looks like an iPhone. Like the, the shape of the mirror is like an iPhone. It has the icons on it. You can move the icons around. You could do anything that an iPhone can do, but it's just in a mirror. So imagine you're leaving your home in the morning and you look at the mirror, you know, you're checking your stuff. Oh, let me check the weather real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check the weather, maybe put on a song. If it's Siri enabled, you can say, hey, Siri, play some music from your mirror, whatever. Yep. It's, he has it connected to like a Sono speaker. It just, it looks pretty cool. And then I was like, I was really thinking about it. Would I use this? Like, would this be practical? And, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, would, it could be just for, if it's all voice activated things that you want it to do, just play music, play a video or something yeah. like that. But I don't really see myself going up to a mirror a whole lot and like pushing buttons and well, yeah, interacting that's the thing. with it. You know? You're normally further... I Look, first of all, I could never do this, so I will not... <laughs> you know, like sometimes we see these tech things and we're like, oh, screw that crap. I'm like, dude, I could never do this. So I'm going to give props to the iPhone mirror. Second of all, it actually looks like what a future iPhone would be because there's yeah, like totally. no bezel. Yeah. And thirdly, it does have one thing in common with the iPhone. What's that? No headphone check. No headphone Put check. Put up Hey, well. Yeah, baby. You know, I had to throw that one in there. But yeah, I thought it was a, I thought it was a pretty cool concept. You know, I mean, for people who are super vain and want to like be in the mirror all the time, and I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I who does it, that? Who, who does be, that type of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> who cares about how they look? I could see it being, you know, the way he has it here in this on his website. Oh, the maker, by the way. Let me let me say his name. I'm sorry, uh, Raphael Dimec. I believe that's how you say his name, Raphael you, you, Dimec. You know, you're a good man. You're like, I've got to say this <laughs> yeah. dude's name. It's really, it's important. Yeah, he, he, got, he actually gave me permission to use this video. He's oh, been super cool. And I might okay. try to get him on Skype just to tell him like, you Thanks, know, how bro. are you using this thing? And blah, 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 blah. He's, so like, anyway. he's like, I'm actually checking my my butt out. You know, I just want to <laughs> make sure my butt looks tight. Yeah, I'm using the, what is that app? The uh, <laughs> What is the, that? App? The, photo, the photo booth app to take pictures of my butt in the mirror. Oh my you know. gosh. But anyway, the way he has it set up, it's like at the bottom of his stairs next to his, you know, his table, like yeah. his, his table where he puts his keys or whatever. So it... I mean, it looks like it could be a practical thing. It looks kind of cool. I mean, okay, I'll it'd be fun that. to have, right? I think it's I think it's fun, and it's yeah. cool that someone sends you and like, hey, let's just talk about it on the show. That's what we do. Uh, and then you had one other thing that you wanted to show us. Is yeah, that correct? Yeah, this is another tweet. Like last week, I mentioned um, we need to make the iPhone great again. <laughs> so some, some dude stargaze on uh, Twitter. He sent me this iPhone Seven concept video. It's just like a little, real quick thing. Oh yeah, I've seen. You know, you know you what saw it is, it, right? Well, it's like when you're edge. on the internet, when you're on the internet, like all the time, which is what we do, it's like, <laughs> it's kind of my job to be this sponge that absorbs so much information. Some of it useful, some of a it lot completely of it worthless. Yeah. Most of it useful. Uh, th there's a w reason why my brain doesn't necessarily function all the time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's cool. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, right? Yeah, I like All that. around the video screen goes all the way around the edges of the phone and it just, you know, whatever. It's, nice. it's, it's very he, He's trying to make the iPhone nice. great again. So thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Stargaze. All right. <laughs> should we uh, hit up our voicemails? Yes. Okay, let's go. Okay. We have a couple. Let's see. Number one. Hi, this is Martin from Raleigh, North Carolina. And I wanted to know if there's any news concerning the Apple file system or APFS uh, that's supposed to come out circa 2017, something like that. Um, would this only be for Mac OS, or would it extend to the entire Apple platform, like iPhones, iPods, iPads, the watch, and Apple TVs? Uh, would it really benefit consumers, or would it just be something that Apple is trying to tell us we need, like dongle gates? I was wondering if you could comment on that. Love the show. Peace. <laughs> Peace. That was Martin, right? Yeah. I love it. So for everyone that doesn't have necessarily reference of what he's asking about, this is the Apple file system. This is their new file system that they're looking to push forward through in uh, 2017. What we mean by a file system. So for example, when you format your hard drive, right? If you've ever seen like they offer you an option when you just want to do like an Apple specifically formatted hard drive, mm. there was HFS, then there was HFS+. Plus. Apple is developing a new, basically a modern file system. Not only will it be compatible with Macs, but basically all their other OS platforms like iOS, Mac OS, T TV, TVOS. TVOS, Mac OS. Uh, Mac OS, Mac OS. 
There also uh, is actually a developer preview of the Apple file system for people that really know what they're doing. Yes, <laughs> in, I was just looking at that. In Maco Sierra. Mm. So you can check that out. But what are some of its benefits? It's optimized for flash and SSD storage. It features strong encryption, multiple levels of encryption. Uh, there's copy on write for metadata and cloning of files. There's There's a few other things. But what I wanted to talk about is the reason why they're doing this is first of all, HFS and HFS Plus are more than 30 years old. So they were developed wow. during the era of floppy disks. All right. Things yeah, yeah. have changed. File sizes have changed. So let's be honest. No matter what, there's a lot of legacy code and junk in there in that file system that makes it less efficient. And so for Apple to develop a new modern file system that can only be good. Now, there really hasn't been any new major news around it, even um, from what I've seen in the developer community. I think it's a great call because it gives us an opportunity to educate people that are listening about it. I think that if any of you are developers that are working specifically with it and can maybe give us some insight on it, we would love to hear it from our show. Uh, again, our number is one 800 616-2638. But there have been no new major developments um, other than the fact that, yes, we are expecting to see it in 2017. But I think some of the main uh, benefits of it is, again, it is going to be a new modern filing system. The encryption level, um, this is a, a article from Ars Technica that pointed out, you know, there's multiple layers or levels of encryption for files There is unencrypted. There's a single key for metadata for the user data. And then the final one that is... Um, kind of brings it to a higher level multi-key with different choices for metadata files and even sections of the files. Um, this is, it's more complex. It's going to be more efficient. And ultimately, I think that being able to use that same modern file system across multiple Apple OSs is going to be a benefit just from a speed performance ish, uh, standpoint as well. So is it going to help me when I'm trying to find a little thumb drive to put a, a file from an Apple computer onto a PC computer? Sure. No, I don't. Because <laughs> that's always it's, the problem I run into. Yeah. Look, the thing is that no matter what, you're you're going to most likely format your drives and in the PC format because as anything, Apple's HFS format, right? If you format a drive like that, you won't see it on a PC. But when you PC format a drive, you'll be able to see it on PC and Macs. You've got to imagine that's going to be exactly the same with this Apple file, this new Apple file system. I hope so. I wouldn't. It really would be the <clears throat> dumbest thing. And uh, he made a great joke like, oh, are they just telling us this is going to be good to use it? Probably to a certain degree. But I think if you're a developer and whatnot, or if you're looking to really bring on a modern system, this is going to be more than welcome. Cool. So I I'm down with it. Right on. Okay. All right. Next call. Hey, Brian, just want to ask, uh, do you think the MacBook Pro is way too expensive for its range? Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> You like how he said way? Way. Way. I think, I think, you know, I've been hearing that from a lot of people, that it's just way too expensive. I think when you compare it to what's available in the market today overall, best bang for buck is not going to be the Apple MacBook Pro, but that's not why you buy it. Like, I've come from the, from the, from a background of like, everyone says, is it worth my money? To me, only you can answer that question. True. Now, when something's a complete ripoff, like that Apple book, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm still tempted to buy that stupid ass thing. <laughs> I really am. I, I shame to see it. shame for even saying that, <laughs> but I need to admit it and be honest with the audience that yeah, yeah. I'm still kind of tempted to buy it. <laughs> Probably should have bought it on day one, just so I could do a video that could get lots of views. <laughs> it would have got lots of views. I know, but show. You know what? Guess what? I'm not about clickbait. <laughs> I'm about quality. Okay. And and clickbait, so I can keep my job. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, you know, I'm never going to tell someone how much something is worth to them. Like, someone's like, hey, should I buy... This is... They're like, oh, is it worth spending $300 on an Apple Watch? I'm like, it's your money. I'm not going to answer that for you. Yeah, I, I've, to me, it's way too much money. It's just $2,500. Like, that's a lot. Of, I'll buy you, like, four laptops. <laughs> four, like, high-end... You could literally... You could legitimately get two high-end yeah. PC-based yeah. laptops. Yeah. Like, no joke. Totally. So... For, for my opinion, it's too expensive. Let's also remember, again, not here to rip on it. No. Just an observation. I would love to have one. I would love to have one, too. <laughs> like, honestly, I'm going to make it my next work computer. I think Q2, they said, is when I'll be able to upgrade my current computer. Q2? Yeah, so it's like six Can't months. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to use the touch bar, but I'm going to get it. Oh, we'll be using the touch bar. We'll be using it. I'm going to emoji you with it. That's all I care about. <laughs> Someone's like... 
Oh man, the touch bar is amazing. Yeah, I'm an emoji. That's all I'm going to use it for. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, we so, have uh, one more call. One more call. Hey, it's Kiara from Ohio, and I had a question. Um, so I currently have like an iPhone 5S, and it has only 16 gigabytes, and I was wondering, like, uh, well, is it going to be a huge difference if I get the iPhone 7 Plus model? Like, what is the pros and what is the cons? And I believe that's all. Okay, have a nice day. Thanks. Got to show love to the ladies. What's up, Kiara? Thanks for calling from Ohio. Ohio. The Buckeye State? Yeah. So what? what is... Although the, the home of the Cleveland Cavaliers, which <laughs> I'll let that pass for now. NBA champs. I'll let that pass for now. Don't remind me. Uh, runners up. World Series runners up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think, look, my one of my friends has, has a... She said 5S, right? 5S, yeah. One of my friends is still holding out on his 5S in the anticipation that the iPhone 8 is going to be just mind-boggling. <laughs> and I'm like, dude... If you get the iPhone 7, it's going to blow your mind away if you have an iPhone 5S. Totally. It's everything about it. You're like, oh my gosh, like what what, what planet have I been on? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the camera alone, like boom. Yeah, yeah. It'll change your life. But I mean, the, the storage, like Sto- she, her, her question was about the storage. 16 gigabytes is nothing. Um, so yeah, her, her fo- she probably has like no music on it (laughs) two photos yeah a couple photos a couple videos and then she has to like (laughs) sync it and take all that stuff off to like put more stuff on iphone 7 will change you're gonna go like six months probably without having to back everything yeah yeah i i would agree with that six months and again what 32 gigs is the starting point so that alone is gonna be awesome could you imagine imagine a world where you don't have to delete photos constantly to make up space? Oh man, I, I actually I like, delete music now because I know I can get my music back. So I delete albums to make space. But that was in the past because That's now no I longer. have sixty foe. I'm rounding my sixty foe. Oh, he's on the six foe. Oh yeah, I'm rolling my Dude. sixty foe. So I got Dude. I got plenty of space. Damn, you know, <laughs> I'm digging that. So look, if you're in the market for it. You're, you it's gonna. Money. I think you're gonna be happy with it. I just. I'm not gonna. You know. You can always wait for new iPhone. Look, based on reports, only one of the phones is gonna be the new OLED phone, and it's gonna be the most expensive, largest screen one. Even that. Yeah. That doesn't get me excited anymore. If this is true. If this is true. Yeah. So, yeah. um, you'll be more than happy with a seven. Totally. It gonna change your life. Six phone. Totally. Six phone. That's it, Brian. Dude, that's it. Yeah, we did. Okay, it. so um, I don't know if you want to do this or not. But since this is our Thanksgiving episode, feel free if you guys would like to leave. Um, but again, if you want to call and be a part of our show, we will be back next week. The number is 1-800-616-2638. But I thought this would be a golden opportunity, Stephen, to give you a second chance for you to do Let's Get Ready to Dongle. Oh, man, I would love to. Would you love? Do you have your phone with you that I you can do. hand over? I do, and, I do, uh, I do. Because I know you felt like, oh, I could do better. What were you at last no, time? Were you around see, 25? I think you're around 10 seconds less than yeah, me. Yeah, I think I like I worried about the countdown, so I want you to count down me this time. Okay. Because I counted oh, yeah. myself down, yeah. so I think that kind of screwed me okay. up a little bit. So we're going to give um, Beecham <laughs> a chance. You, I believe you, hit at 20, I believe you hit at 25 or 26. Yeah, it was like 26 something. Okay. I'm also going to give it a second try as well. Okay. I don't know if I can top mine. So you want me to say three, two, one, and you're going to say, let's get ready to dongle. Yeah. Okay? Okay. And I'm going to time you, okay? Oh, wait, wait. Okay. This is another thing I was thinking. Don't start the clock until I start, okay? Is that, I know. Is no, I'm going to say, yeah, right when you say the word let's, okay. I'm going to hit it. Got it. Got it. Got I'm going to hit it, okay? Got it. Here we go. Let me let Periscopers watch you suffer. Hang on. I got to like open my diaphragm up here. Okay. Are you ready to dongle? What are the YouTube saying? Are they ready to, are you ready to dongle? Uh, Yeah, they're ready to dongle, it looks like. Okay. Here we go. Ready? And I won't start until you say the first word let's. Okay. Sit up straight. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's get ready to dongle! Thirty. 
thirty point nine five. Ah, yeah. yeah. So I thought you were. Yeah. About, I thought you were about to die. I you, was. You were about to die at twenty six. <laughs> yeah. At twenty six, like, and pulled, then you and then you basically forced yourself to almost pass out. I pulled some from the depths of my soul. Shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> thirty point nine five. I don't even know if I can top that right now. <laughs> you did thirty seven though. So shut up. Okay. So it's my it. it's my turn. Okay. Okay. So thirty point nine five. Um, I'm gonna let me okay. let me. This is the only reason we're doing this. This is our Thanksgiving 30, episode. Wait, yeah, we're, thirty we're just, point. Wait, this camera thirty point nine five. That's for the record. Shit, I'm getting nervous now, dude. We're getting the record. I'm getting down. nervous now. Okay. Okay. I still can't beat you, man. I'm <laughs> no, 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 like... no. Honestly, my lung power. That's. <laughs> that's pretty. <laughs> wow, that's really good. Okay, here we go. Okay, hang on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get ready to dunk all. Okay. 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 Anytime you're ready. Okay, ready to go. Just do. Oh yeah, because you don't even have to I'll do go. a countdown, Three, right? Three, two, one. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna. I just need to prep it. Like, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get ready to dongle. It just helps me. Okay. Okay. Cool. Actually, no. I'm just gonna do. Let's get ready to dongle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ready? Whenever. So do three, two, one. Three, two, one. Let's get ready to dongle. Thirty-three, uh, seven point oh, seven it. three. It. You still yeah. beat me though, dude. I felt it though that I didn't have it as much. I think I took the deep breath that screwed me up. <laughs> that was great. Good job. Oh, damn it. Good job. Wow. Impressive. That's hard. Uh, honestly, I'm physically drained after that. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard. Okay, totally. so we just added an extra three minutes of worthless content. <laughs> there you go, guys. <laughs> For your okay. Thanksgiving pleasure. Thanksgiving, baby. All right, should we uh, should we wrap up the show? Yeah, let's wrap it. Okay, if you guys want to play that game with your friends uh, during this break, feel free to. It's called the Apple Bite Dongle Challenge, but don't faint. If you want to send them to us, dude, yeah, send them I to will, us. We will watch them. <laughs> yes. Hashtag Apple Bite Dongle Challenge. <laughs> I will watch that crap. Hell yeah. Okay, again, you can call us 1-800-616-2638. That's going to do it for us. Enjoy your Thanksgiving if you celebrate it. Other than that, enjoy the time, the holidays with your family, friends, and loved ones. Be safe. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace. All right.